the first point I want to make is has a name, and the name of it is interaction is first. Interaction first. So what, is it, what does that mean? I'll come back to it. The question, the theoretical question is, why does therapy work when it works? And <clears throat> that's the question. Now look what I do. First I get very specific about how I would like that question to go before I try to answer it. So how I would like it to go is, why would it help anybody to say, to talk about, to express their trouble? And this is, of course, what the person who doesn't know anything about therapy would ask you. You know, yeah, well, whenever I get into those things, I just feel bad. So I go and I pay you to tell you all these things, and that's just going to make me feel bad, isn't it? And the usual answer to that would be, you're a doctor, you're a wise guy, you're going to tell me some solutions that I can't think of. And we all know that isn't quite true, right? So the question is, if, if the therapist or the listener, whoever that might be, is not going to give answers to the person's problems, because we don't really know any answers, what is going on such that it sometimes helps to do this, right? It's probably the first question you ever thought of. It can't be a question that you haven't thought about. <laughs> you know, this person's going to come, they're going to tell me all their troubles, they're going to cry, they're going to complain, they're going to be stuck, and then they're going to say, well, doctor, what do I do? And then I'm not going to know what to do, and there isn't anybody who's ever practiced who, who hasn't thought about that. And the question that theoretically is, well, what is supposed to work here? What is supposed to happen such that this paradox works? Such that going into and feeling all over again all these bad things will make you better? What is that? What happens there? Theoretically, my answer, don't forget all theories are sometimes wrong, my answer is that a human being is not a box full of content, whether you call them experiences or feelings or, or dynamic circuits or whatever, however you want to think about the, what I call the content. A human being is not the content. A human being is interaction. And notice that I'm violating the grammar by saying that. I'm supposed to say a human being is in interaction, because the word interaction is so structured grammatically that there's supposed to be an A and then a B and then they interact. And instead of that, I'm saying something strange. I'm saying, no, I think we are interactions. I think living bodies are interactions with the air and the ground and the food and other species members. I think we are interactions. And from that point of view, if you look at a person, like if you're looking at me, you can see that I'm interaction, right? I've got these eyes and these hands and these feet on the ground and these sexual organs and this inhaling, exhaling and this sweating out and taking in. You see it? I am interaction. And not just on the physical level, I'm interaction with other people nine months with my mother before I was even born, and then everybody else, the people in my so-called head, which is really further down than my, just my head, all those people from the past and my present life and you people here, and then I am also a special kind of interaction with myself. So while I'm talking, that's going on more, more below. But when I stop, or right away, I talk to myself. I say, hmm, do you think you said it? Do you think that made sense to them? Do they look like they're, you know. Uh, so that too is interaction. Mm -hmm.